episode three of the history of i'm emma and i'm robert and today we are doing the history of boxing but first we must say our egg carton count today's egg carton count is still it's actually it's it's improved it's seven now uh it's six we it's it's six (laughs) we took one down and put one up we realized all the extensive cleaning uh, of the wall and of the egg cartons uh, to prep prep them for putting them up. So that's why they're not sticking to the wall. It's a lot of work to it put is a lot of work. egg cartons up there, but we're fixing that. Uh, and I have two clarifications to make about last episode. Uh, there were a few facts that I got wrong. So first... I said the term uh, link is interchangeable with the term golf course. This is not true, as links tend to be hillier, uh, and the separation between holes is less defined than a course. Uh, Yes, they are very similar, but a course course has more separation between holes, more defined. You'll have the fairway, whereas links are just like hills with spotty spotty holes and uh, driving areas patches so it's less it's less defined in that way and also i stand corrected on my pet peeve about saying subpar par actually means average and so in golf someone with a below average score is actually a good thing however uh, a subpar or below average cup of coffee is a bad thing Uh, so par means has means slightly different things depending on the context still means average but below average can mean a good thing in golf and a bad thing uh, anywhere else. Uh, Sorry, folks, I misunderstood. That's on me. And uh, anyway, about the topic of boxing, I'm going to say for a little while, a couple guys on my ultimate team were weirdly obsessed with UFC. Now, maybe not obsessed, but they they went through a phase where they were wrestling. Uh, They stayed up till like 2 a.m. watching UFC fights, which... You, that's actually not quite boxing. That's MMA, which stands for Mixed Martial Arts. Mm. Um, MMA is an artful blend of boxing and wrestling, but that's not what this episode is about. Uh, this is about boxing, and uh, Emma, you can start it off. Like many things, boxing was actually first seen in Egypt around 3000 BC. Not much of it, it was known about the sport until the Greek Olympic Games in the later part of the 7th century BC. Like every other sport in the Olympics, boxing was seen seen as a for, form of entertainment. The Greeks protected their hands and forearms with leather straps. And uh, later, in the Roman Empire, boxing was further displayed as a form of entertainment uh, with gladiators uh, fighting in arenas. And the reason that we point out that it's a form of entertainment, and this is not only just fighting, but organized fighting as a form of entertainment for others, So that's really what sets apart boxing as opposed to just street fights. Uh, However, uh, these, so remember these gladiators with uh, leather straps, or sorry, not gladiators. I'll just read that again. Later in the Roman Empire, boxing was further displayed as a form of entertainment uh, with gladiators fighting in arenas. Uh, However, instead of leather straps, the gladiators wore what was called a cestus. Now, a cestus was a metal studded glove. It was probably the first form of brass knuckles. Now remember, these gladiators were fighting to the death, so they wanted anything they could do to win. This is, yeah, this is uh, getting intense. This is, this is getting serious. Uh, And a quick aside, in the golf episode, uh, we went through Egypt, then Greece, then Rome. So where do you think we go next? Uh, Well, if you guessed somewhere in the UK or England, you would be correct. Again, like golf, boxing went silent for a long period of time until we see it start to emerge in England in the 1600s. Later, in 1813, uh, a book called Boxiana was published in England. It was a series uh, released over the course of two years about the informal uh, fist fighting of the time. And it was actually it was actually a couple volumes, but I'm just talking about the first volume of Boxiana. And I'm not exactly sure what Boxiana translates to. I've seen some sources say that it means to bruise, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. Anyway, 
This could be where the term boxing originated. Another explanation is that as the sport got more organized, the established stakes in, gr in the ground with rope borders formed a sort of box, but that's called a ring. Uh, and actually the term ring comes from a ring that would be drawn on the ground uh, to mark the border. Later on, still in the early days of boxing, officials or bystanders would stand in a circle and hold a rope as a border. This was another form of the ring, and we think that's, where, that's why we call it the boxing ring, and a uh, box could have come from, uh, again, that, that rope and stake, uh, or rope and post structure that we know today. Well, I guess it's kind of sometimes more like an octagon today, but I don't know. We're changing everything. It was not until 1880 that an amateur boxing league was established in England. Now, there were five different weight classes. The lowest, or for the least weight class, is the Bantam. So that's anyone under 54 kilograms or 119 pounds. Then there's feather class, featherweight class. Anyone between 54 and 57 kilograms or 119 and about 125 pounds. Next, we have the lightweight class, and that's anyone between 57 kilograms and 63.5 kilograms or about 125 pounds and 140 pounds. Next, we have the middleweight class. Now that's anyone between 63.5 kilograms and 73 kilograms or 140 pounds and 161 pounds. Now the biggest weight class, as you may have heard, is the heavyweight class. And this is anyone above 161 pounds. That's, that's a lot of information, that's just like, throwing numbers all over us, Emma. And, uh, but anyway, boxing was first included in the Olympics in uh, the 1904 St. Louis Games, and the U.S. was the only country to compete in boxing that year, so I'm not exactly sure how that worked. Maybe we just competed against ourselves, but that's pretty interesting. However, the sport was not included in the 1912 Olympic Games because in Stockholm, Sweden, where the Olympics were that year, boxing was illegal. Yeah, it was outlawed, so boxing was banned that year. And other than this exception, boxing has been uh, an active Olympic event since 1904. And this is not to mention... Yeah, actually, the introduction of women's boxing was in the 2012 London Olympics. Before then, women's boxing was not in the Olympics. And uh, it's impossible to go through the 20th and 21st centuries without mention mentioning the greatest boxers of all time. Whoop, whoop. According to Ranker.com, Rocky Marciano is the number one greatest boxer of all time. And quick side note, in the Rocky movies, Rocky took his nickname from Marciano However, his first real name is Roberto, and that Just was like revealed in the second Rocky movie. So, there's a piece of movie trivia for you. Anyway, other famous names on the list include Jack Dempsey at number two, Muhammad Ali at number six, Joe Frazier at number seven, Mike Tyson at number 13, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. at number 19. Now, something about Muhammad Ali. He's known to be of the first famous trash talkers in modern sports. He really paved the way of uh, all the trash talkers out there. And he had a lot of famous trash talking lines. But one of my favorite uh, Ali lines is, quote, I'm not the greatest. I'm the double greatest. Not only do I knock him out, I pick the round. Mic drop. I, I love that one. And this brings us sort of interesting segue this brings us to a uh, sports news story from a couple years ago now we'll say you'll say how does this tie in to the history of boxing but it'll it'll tie in you'll see uh and i know sports news is not uh, really our style but i might include it because i had never heard it uh maybe you heard it i don't follow sports news very closely i probably should but on April 5th, 2018, uh, Conor McGregor and his entourage were in a parking garage after a, quote, media day. So I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, and a bus of other fighters were driving by to leave. 
and McGregor attempted to get in but was unable to. So as the bus started to drive away, he picked up a guardrail, put that down probably because it was too big, but then picked up a hand truck and chucked it at this bus. Uh, the window was destroyed and lightweight fighter uh, Michael Chiesa, who was unfor- unfortunately sitting just inside, was injured. Yeah, I believe someone went blind because of this event, right? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, okay. McGregor was suspended from UFC fighting for six months, but legally served five days of community service as well as anger management at a church in New York. Yeah, an anger management course. This is just one example of how boxing and professional sports in general has been increasingly publicized and commercialized with celebrities in overly dramatic cases like this. So you can see, maybe we should even do a uh, a history of episode about this, about how sports has just become uh, celebrities, uh, whereas opposed to in the past, it was just um, really people doing this for fun, not, not for the money, but money has just taken over. So we might do an episode on that in the future. But uh, today, there are a number of leagues and organizations uh, governing the sport of boxing all over the world, like the United States Boxing Association, the Iranian Boxing Association, and the French Boxing Federation. Oui, oui. However, boxing is very sl- slowly declining in commercial popularity compared to MMA mixed martial arts, which is on the rise. This history of episode is not about MMA, so I won't get into much detail, but I will say that the commercial side of MMA is dominated by UFC, which stands for Ultimate Fighting Championship. Yeah, MMA hasn't quite passed boxing yet, but it is getting there. Uh, And if you have any questions or comments about the information provided in this episode, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Have a blessed day and never stop learning.